Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often reviewing rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have our um, 100 proof series from Signature Vintage, 12, 13, and 14, the number. So there's been 14, uh, 15 and 16, I think, over there with the Coila and with the Secret Orkney, which is a Highland Park, which I'm going to do separately or not at all. I'm not a peat head, so I'm not going to review the Coila. Now let's very briefly talk about these before we start reviewing them. The Alrusk, that's how I pronounce it, that's how I see um, whiskey profies pronouncing it. So Alrusk um, is whiskey base 251438, as I said, 13 years of age. All of these are first fill Oloroso sherry cask mature, maturation, full maturation, but so all of these, both of all three of these are 51 point. 57.1% ABV, and all of these have a recommended retail price of 47 euros and 90 cents, which I think is too low. And you're going, Jason, why are you complaining about whiskey that's too cheap? Well, um, the interesting thing is this is not really selling in Europe. A little bit of Netherlands, Germany, yes, but the rate of which they're putting out the bottles, they put out 15 different bottles within the last four months over here in Germany. This is way too many. On top of that, they're also putting out their small batch series. I think there's been at least eight of those, maybe only six, six of those that have hit the market also this year so far. I don't have enough shelf space in my studio here, let alone a shop that says, hey, I don't have enough shelf space at all for 22 new expressions within six months, five months. No. Signature Vintage, you're overwhelming us. You're overwhelming us with too much whiskey. There was the exceptional, um, the three, one, two, and three, um, one under proof that were even older, just a little bit more expensive. And these have, they're, they're being discounted already. Instead of 47, they've always, they've made their way down to 44 euros already. Now, um, how can we be angry at two, a whiskey that is too, ex, too inexpensive? Well, just imagine we need to have margins, all right? So 30% for the shopkeeper, 30% for the importer. Um, you have 13.03 um, euros per liter of alcohol. Just say this is 57.1%. I have to do the math here real quick. One second. By 57.1% ABV, 0 0.7 liter, we have basically 5 euros and 20 cents, which is alcohol excise tax. We have of the bottle here, which is, um, let's go for 47.9, uh, divided by 1.19. So we have um, basically about um, 7 euros and 70 cents are um, VAT, value added tax on top of this. And um, you have to take that away. The government gets that money. And what's left, 30% for the importer, 30% for the um, retailer. Not much left over for Signature Vintage, right? I don't see many people making much money at all. Now, Signature Vintage has tens of thousands of barrels laying around, so they need to do something with them. The question is, will a 12-year-old um, Milton Duff in a first fill Oloroso Sherry get better with 18 or 25? Will the Manoch Moor, um, the 11-year-old, get better? Or will the Aurusk 13-year-old uh, get better? I don't know. All right, whiskey base number. The Aurusk is whiskey base 251438. The Man of More is 251678, and the Milton Duff is 251427. So, oh, I did not pour the Milton Duff, shame on me. Diageo, Diageo, um, Chavis uh, Regal, so Peno Ricard. The colors of these are just amazing how different they are. So, I don't know if you can see this or not. Dark, light, dark. So this is the darkest, the Milton Duff. Therefore, this has to be the whiskey that is the best. Now, that is incorrect, and yet 
almost every blind tasting I've done, um, I've done, I'm going to say at least a hundred blind tastings online so far. And in most of the cases, I'm talking 80 to 90% of all the cases, the darkest whiskey wins or the, the most peat wins, the most smoke, the smokiest wins. Um, and you have a combination of dark and peat. Hey, people will love it. Now, these are not peaty, but these are, some of them are dark. And um, many people associate in their brain, darker means better quality, and it's not true. And also here we see the difference of the first fill auto roll. So here versus here, even in the bottles, you can see this. I hope that does show through a little bit here, the, the different colors. Um, and they're both Olo Rosso, they're both first fill sherries. And yet the effect on the whiskey after here are um, 11 years and after here are 12 years is significant. All right, on the nose, we're just going to go from left to right. Orosk, um, dark cherries and a tiny little bit of toasted grain. I don't know if you've ever been in a distillery that has been um, distilling on corn with the corn and it has the rummingers, you know, you've been ever to, to Glen Fockless and so on, and that something burns. And that almost as if the malted barley burnt. Just a tad, but I get it. The Manachmoa, on the nose, this is the lightest. Fruity, vanilla, a tiny bit of mineral moments. Had I not known, I would have went, oh, is this a Glen Anarchy? Like an old Glen Anarchy before our Billy Walker took over and put cherry everywhere, virgin oak. Interesting. And the distiller character, often with Glen Lossie, that's a sister distiller in the same property as Manoch Moa, um, I get a light grassy note here. I'm not getting grass. I'm getting more of the mineral. And the last one, the Milton Duff, are... Um, Pinot Ricard moment. This is the most typical sherry bomb moment that I've had in a signature vintage up to now, I think. Think Abalawa Abuna. Think that pure sherry bomb moment. Abalawa Abuna, 65, 75 euros. This, 47. So if you want a good sherry bomb, and actually this has the best review so far online uh, with Whiskey Base, 86.4, um, 85.7, and the 85.3. So if I were to rank them, this would be least. Second best, the best at the moment from the whiskey community. Now these both only have 40 reviews. This does have 60 reviews already, the Milton Duff. And um, these are, they just, they, they hit the market in the middle of Mar middle of May. It's now the middle of June when I do the review here. These have just been on the market. And these are the geeks. These are the people out there that go to a whiskey fair, pr try them out, write down their notes, put it online. These are the people who actually do bottle shares and buy bottle, uh, sample bottles, sell sample bottles in order to get the bottles out there for their whiskey clubs and so by, and so on. This is for the people who are very, very quick to try the newest products on the market almost every single time. And yeah, so this isn't the daily drinker. This isn't the person that, okay, probably daily drinkers. This isn't the person that buys two bottles of whiskey a year. And that's a lot for most people. These are the people who are buying a couple bottles a month. Not to drink and enjoy and to destroy but rather to collect, to share, and to um, just um, have them. And that's a whole different ball game here. Good. I'm going to go here, then here, and then here, and try them and see what I like. Orosk. It's got a sour moment as well. A little bit of that buttermilk sourness. That is not a great whiskey. Very fresh, a little bit of mint even. And here, the deep sherry balm, a little bit of leather, a little bit of a artificial type of sherry syrup as well. 
Okay, I've had so much sherry matured whiskey in the last couple of years. I'm almost sick and tired of it. That's why I'm not hopping up and down going, wow, wow. Had I been in the mood for a good sherry whiskey, this would have been my favorite. But it's kind of like, oh, sherry again. Zero distillates, zero spirit-driven moment, all cast-driven. Otis What I don't get here, towards the end, is a almost mocha, almost like, as I mentioned, something burnt. It's got that, it should be roasting aromas, but it's almost like burnt toast. It's almost like coffee, bitter. And there's a little bit of sweetness, and yet there's a little bit of bitterness here. This is definitely not my wheelhouse. This is going to be a C-. minus. I cannot recommend the Orusk at this point in time. With a little bit of water, now we are 57.1%, don't forget. Mm -hmm. The whiskey calms down a little bit, but that, that burnt barley moment is still there. Really, really not my, not my cup of tea, people. C minus, value for money, I'm still going to say a C. This might hit people's profile, especially if you like the Balconus um, rye. If you like that, ro that roasted moment going on in there, this might be something for you. I don't, I'm not excited about it. So, moving over to our Manachmoa. Now, Manach Moa is a distillery most people don't talk about. It was founded in 1971. Diageo owns it. It has three spirit stills, three wash stills. But it is. it was mothballed 1995. Production was started 1989 again. The first single malt that they actually ever put out, I think it was the Flora and Fauna, was 1992. This is not a whiskey that a lot of people get to try from Manoch Moa. But I personally enjoy this one at the moment considerably. Mm. At this point in time, I'm looking forward to more and more spirit-driven, less cast-driven whiskeys. Cast-driven is this, when the cast takes over and absolutely influences your palate experience almost exclusively. The spirit-driven is where the cask is in the driver, not in driver's seats, in the passenger seat. And the spirit itself is a little bit more in the, in the driver's seat. This takes you for a nice little drive, shows you around, there's some transitions in there, and everything, in my opinion, is very, very nicely balanced. The sherry doesn't bulldoze its way through there. It's supporting role. There's a little bit more of a mint moment going on, a little bit more of a herbal moment going on. This is a very fine whiskey. I'm going to give this a B-. minus. I'm going to give this whiskey a C plus B minus for value for money. If you can pick this up for 47 euros someplace and you like to have a spirit driven, a uh, little bit of minty moment, a little bit of an herbal moment with the um, sherry in a supporting role. Well done. It only, it's only, it's only 11 years old, but it is a first fill Oloroso sherry, sherry butts that were used here. And I must admit, I like five one, sorry two five one six seven eight at whiskey base. Good stuff, and in Germany at the moment forty four euros ninety is the cheapest shop I can see. So and there's a lot of shops that have it, and a lot of stuff just laying around. And that's one of the biggest problems we have at the moment with signature vintage. Is we can 
We can buy it, but I don't know if we can always sell it. <laughs> so as a shop. Last but not least, Milton Duff. Now, Milton Duff is the sherry bomb of the three. Some people just love it. And there are moments, especially in the fall and the winter of the year, that I gravitate also towards that. But we have now summer coming around. Um, this is not the summer whiskey I would enjoy. This is a spring whiskey, maybe even a summer whiskey. This is definitely a fall and winter whiskey. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Leather. Sherry. Cherry. Maybe even a little bit of raspberry. Thick, creamy. Long lasting. Tiny, tiny little bit of um, astringency. There's a, there's a lot of sweetness and there's a little bit of astringency. A little bit of wood coming in here. This is very nice. I like. I like. As I said, B minus, C plus, C plus. Maybe even a B minus as well. Let's tell them, let's say they're both here. Different but equal. Summer and spring whiskey, fall and winter whiskey. Um, it's got a little bit of an acidity going on in there from the berries, from the sherries, from the thing. There's a little bit of a herbal moment going on. Um, ich hätte, nope, I could have, I'm sorry, I almost went to German there. I could have thought this was a little bit of Pedro Jimenez in there as well. No, not Pedro Jimenez. This could have been actually a cream sherry butt. So what is cream sherry? You take Oloroso, you take then um, BX, you put it together. It tastes like cream sherry. But it does say here, first fill Oloroso on it. So why not? Good stuff. Good stuff. So vanilla, everything's there. Put a little bit of water in there. This is my cask driven. This is my spirit driven spirit of the series so far. Mm -hmm. Even a little bit of strawberry jam, a little bit of raspberry jam, a lot of wood, a lot of leather. Nice, very, very nice. So both of these bottles are a, um, for value for money, B minus. Let's just say that, 47 euros. Where else can you find almost cast strength whiskey, 57.1%, age statement, here we have 12, here we have 11, um, under, under 50 euros, 47, under 45 at some places. This is amazing whiskey for the value for money. And yet people are hardly buying it outside of Germany. I just go, whoa, I would recommend to buy a bottle. Just put it aside and come back to it when you have time. I would not recommend to go out for the Al Rusk. I would say skip that one. The Koila, I've only heard good things about it. It's a second fill rum cask. I'm not going to try it. Um, the Secret Orkney, maybe it's going to get its own video. I don't know here at the moment. Um, but also that is a whiskey that many people were like, ooh, Highland Park, good stuff. So my question is, what bottlings can you recommend from Manachmoor? And what bottlings can you recommend from Milton Duff? They should have an age statement. They should be well over 50% ABV. And they should cost less than 100 euros per bottle. And you're going to see there are bottles out there under, under, under 100 euros, but nothing, I can't find anything under 50 euros, except for these. The last question of the day is what is more your summer whiskeys and what are more your winter whiskeys? I tend to like the sherry bombs in the winter more than the summer. I like my bourbons and rice and my more spirit driven um, bottlings in the summer more. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing and telling others. See you real soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.